Hey guys, in this lesson, I'm going to cover using generative AI as an educational assistant. So most of us have already started using Gen AI for a variety of different use cases. If you're not using it, you really need to be. It's extremely powerful and both as an educational assistant and also making us more productive as well. So it can answer a huge variety of questions, generate projects, ideas, and even generate code. And we're going to see how to do that. So I'm using ChatGPT. You might be using a variety of other different Gen AI models. That's fine. I prefer ChatGPT at this point in time. It's a language model developed by OpenAI. So it you submit text and it generates text in response. And you can have really a conversation. It's conversational. It's back and forth. You're asking questions. It's giving you answers. And then you can ask additional questions. And it remembers the context. That's really important. So you're having a contextual conversation. There's various different plans. I won't go into the details of these. It's up to you what you choose. There is a free version. It gives you the older model and sometimes you can't get access to it. So that's a problem for 20 or $30 a month. I think it's so much so worth actually spending the money and getting access to the latest model and also being able to access it whenever you need to. Now the models are changing all the time. You don't need to notify me that these numbers are out of date. Maybe it's four plus whatever the next one is. That's fine. Just use the latest model if you can. Now you can install a variety of plugins as well for different functions and you can create browse and use your own GPTs. That means you can train the GPT for specific use cases like maybe you want to use it for code generation, maybe you want to write articles, whatever it is you want to do. That's only available for the Plus and Team plans at this point in time on ChatGPT. So why would you want to use AI as a learning tool? Well, you get immediate assistance with questions. Of course, when you're trying to learn cloud, you're probably going to have a lot of questions. You're going to have some doubts. You're going to have some confusion. Well, you've got this immediate assistance. It's like there's a person there with really broad knowledge, broad and deep knowledge, who's able to then help you answer those questions in real time rather than, rather than waiting for a response from somebody. It's contextually aware so you can have a conversation. You can then drill into areas where you're still a little bit confused or you just want more information. And it has extremely broad training data. So almost any topic, it has um, a very deep knowledge. Now, there are some concerns. So you need to check when the model was trained. Uh, facts could be out of date, like AWS, for example, is changing at such a fast rate that sometimes it could be a little bit out of date by several months or more. And that can be, you know, quite a few changes can happen on AWS during that time frame. Sometimes the AI model is wrong. So you've got to make sure you check the work, you check what it's telling you. Does it make sense? Just fact check it sometimes if you really need to. If it's important information, you need to sort of double check and just use your gut feel to, to understand whether it's giving you the right information or not. Sometimes it hallucinates. That is a term used by AI experts. It means it kind of makes up the answer. I think sometimes it's trying to tell you what it thinks you want to hear. So you've got to watch out for that. Now for prompt engineering. So prompt engineering is we're putting in a prompt. We're asking it a question. We're trying to get it to give us some information. We're trying to get it to generate some code. And so we have to get good at writing good prompts. They should be clear, but also specific about what you're asking for and what type of response you want to receive. Contextual information, very useful. So give as much information as you can on the background of what it is you're trying to do and what the purpose of your query is. And again, what type of response are you looking for from the AI model? In terms of instructional design, sometimes prompts are crafted to instruct the AI in a specific way of responding. So you can ask for a list, you can ask for bullet points, you can ask for a very brief summary, you can ask for detailed instructions, whatever it is that you need. Use iterative refinement. That basically means you're doing it back and forth with the AI model, constantly reading the responses and then asking for a bit more information, providing a bit more context, a bit more input to get a better answer. Now, code generation is one of the fantastic abilities of ChatGPT and other AI models. We need to be specific and detailed about what we want. And for example, if you're trying to generate some projects for AWS, which is a, it's a really good tool for doing that. If you want some ideas for projects, it's going to give you the ideas. It's also going to generate the instructions and the code. So be specific about what you want to achieve or ask it for some advice to come up with a scenario for you and then ask it to fill out the details and start building out the instructions and the code. Define the scope, so make sure you're clear on what you want. Are you looking for a snippet of code? Are you looking for the full code? Are you looking for building out functions, scripts, an entire application architecture end to end? It can do all of those things, so it just need to be clear with the 
generative model as to what exactly you need. It can be useful to mention the programming languages and tools. So especially if you're learning a particular programming language, like Python, for example, maybe you want to ask the, G the GPT to actually generate Python code for you. That way it's going to help you build your skills as well. And you'll be able to start reading it and interpreting it and looking for any issues that might arise. State AWS services clearly. What exactly do you want to include in your architecture? I'm assuming here that you're building some kind of project for AWS, which means you could then specify that you want some kind of serverless event-driven application. And these are the services I want to include. Security and best practices. So if you have specific security or best practices you need to adhere to, make sure you're clear about that in your prompt. There can be issues with code, for example, where it's not written in the most secure fashion. So you want to try and be careful about the code that's generated. I think in most organizations, they're not just going to take code from something like ChatGPT and put it into production. It should definitely go through uh, some senior developers and some review processes to make sure that it's good code. You can also ask for error handling and logging. So sometimes you'll ask it to generate some code for a Lambda function, but it won't include the logging capability in there, which means that if some issues arise, you can't go straight into CloudWatch logs and find out what happened. So it's useful to just tell the GPT that you, you need some error handling logic built in. And then test and validation. Always test and validate your code. Always check that it's written securely. Always check, of course, that it's working and it's functional, but it's secure as well. So a few use cases that are really useful. And these are things I want to go into in a hands-on lesson. So firstly, just getting GPT to answer some questions for you so you can use it as an educational assistant. Secondly, coming up with project ideas, the best way to build your skills on AWS is to constantly work on projects, solve problems yourself, and build things out, think unique solutions to problems. You can work with the GPT to come up with the ideas. You can also get the GPT to completely fill out the instructions and the code. It's still going to be a learning exercise because I guarantee you it won't always work first time. Sometimes I've asked for various different things like a sometimes the Lambda function code won't work correctly. And you have to go and get the logging information from CloudWatch logs, find the errors and provide them back to the GPT and say this is the error that occurred. And then it's going to start fixing the issues. So there's still problems and you're still going to learn as you build this out. But it's a really great tool in order to come up with the ideas. And then if we want to, we can try and build them out ourselves or we can get some assistance right through to detailed instructions. So I'm logged into ChatGPT. So all I need to do here is just put in some prompts and ask the AI to sort of help me in whatever way that I want it to. Now, it's good to provide some context. So I try to be fairly detailed. Now, in terms of creating projects, what I want to do is I want it to help me come up with some project ideas. Now, I don't really know exactly what I want at this point in time. I just know that I want to learn some more about AWS. And I don't really know how to come up with these ideas. So I want it to help me. So what I'm going to do is just ask it to provide some ideas. And then I'm going to choose one of the ideas. So let's set some context. Um, I need you to act as a lab architect for AWS certification training. I need some ideas for learning AWS serverless services. Yeah, that might be fun. AWS serverless services. And I'm going to give it some context so uh, or some some more specificity if you like. So I want to say I, I need a few ideas to choose from that are ideal for beginners to AWS. If you're more advanced, just tell it that you want more advanced ones. And I'm going to specify exactly what I need. So uh, I want four ideas to choose from. So this is just the starting point. I don't try and throw everything into one prompt. I just want to get some ideas and let's see what it comes up with. Uh, and if I don't like the ideas, I'll ask it for more. Okay, we can just go back and forth all day. So yeah, okay, let's see what it says. Serverless web application. Build a simple web application with Lambda, API Gateway, and Amazon S3. Okay, that sounds pretty cool. What's the next one? A data processing pipeline. Okay, that's quite fun as well. S3 triggering a Lambda function for an event notification. The Lambda function processes the file. Process data gets stored in DynamoDB. Okay, that's pretty cool. Serverless notification system with some triggers. Again, we've got Lambda, SNS, SMS. Um, we've got a serverless chat application. That's pretty cool as well. So you can see straight away, I mean, there might be areas that are more interesting to you. Um, I'm going to say I like idea one. Provide 
So I'm going to tell it exactly what I need now. I need you to provide detailed instructions. I need full code, not sample code. Sometimes it tries to sort of summarize and say, here's a little bit of code, but you, you can fill out the rest. Well, I, that's not what I want. I want, I need full code, not sample code. I need detailed instructions for all steps in building the application. Let's see what it comes up with. Sometimes it's super fast, sometimes a little bit slower, but it gets there. Now, one thing to note is, oh, I'm going to stop it straight away. This application will demonstrate the basics of a serverless application. For the sake of this example, let's build a basic Hello World example. I'm going to say, Hello World is boring. I need a more interesting solution that showcases AWS services better. Okay, so you can stop it whenever you need to. Let's design a serverless feedback form that collects user feedback, stores it. Okay, now we're getting a bit more interesting. So we've got a static website, Lambda functions triggered by API gateway, database notification system. So now it's coming back with some information. Don't know about you, but it doesn't look that detailed. So if that's the case, I mean, I, I can certainly work off this, but uh, if you're a beginner, that might not be detailed. Now here's the thing, sometimes you can't get the end-to-end -end instructions in one go. What you might want to do that at that point is break it down and say, okay, tell me, explain to me in more detail step one, okay, and then go on to step two and so on. Sometimes I've come up with some pretty complex project ideas and I break it down because I, I ask it to summarize the various different steps of the application. And then for each one of them, I build it out. And I try to do some testing as I'm building it out as well. One thing I can tell you is that this code might not work. I mean, look, it's pretty amazing that it's come up with this code for me. Is it going to work? I don't know. I'm going to have to implement it. Often when we're using Lambda, we just need to make sure that we tell, if it doesn't do it for us, make sure we tell the AI to include logging so that we can get some information in CloudWatch logs. And that's the place to go when your Lambda function doesn't execute correctly. Go and have a look. You can often find an error message. Literally just copy paste that error message. I don't even need to tell it there's an error. I just copy paste the error message into the chat and it finds it, understands what I'm talking about and it gives me some feedback. Maybe it updates the code. So. This is just the beginnings, obviously. We could spend a lot of time on this. It takes a bit of time to work with this. It's not going to be a five-minute job if you want a working solution. It's going to be a process. It might take you, you know, an hour, might take you a few hours. Back and forth, you know, getting some more information. The idea is that we're using this as a learning experience, not just uh, getting some step-by-step -step instructions so that we can just build something because then we're just working to instruction. We want to we want to actually learn what we're doing along the way. So you can always stop and ask it to explain a little bit more detail about what it's doing. So certainly this is not an end-to-end -end solution. What I would do is I would go back and now ask it for a bit more information. We probably want some more detail in things like API Gateway to make sure that we configure it correctly. We're going to need to do some testing. We're almost definitely going to have some issues that we're going to then need to have a back and forth with the AI to get it to help us to work towards a final solution. But that's an amazing way of building out ideas and learning and working with the AI to help us to advance our skills on AWS. Now, there's a couple of other areas that I want to bring to your attention. So one is the CLI. The CLI is, it, you know, it can be a very useful, very powerful way of working with AWS, but it also can be quite frustrating trying to build out command lines. ChatGPT is brilliant at this. So let's say um, I want to create a VPC with public and private subnets. I need you to provide the AWS CLI commands to execute or to deploy this infrastructure. Simple as that. Now this is somewhere where I found it very, very accurate. When we get into more complex code, cloud formation templates, it will write cloud formation templates for us. There's often problems. Uh, we get sort of Lambda function code and stuff like that. Uh, very good, but there's a few problems here and there, so you're constantly troubleshooting. I found with the CLI, it's it's almost completely accurate every time. So you can see it's it's telling us all the various different commands that we need to to perform, and it should just tell us in the correct order as well. If it doesn't, I'd be surprised. It usually shows you the order. So create the VPC first, then you want to create the public subnets, private subnets, internet gateway attach the internet gateway to the VPC, and so on. So now we have all of the commands to perform this particular operation. As I mentioned, another thing you can get it to do is create CloudFormation templates. Um, let's just say, instead, provide a CloudFormation template 
to create this VPC. Now I often specify, um, I, I want this to be in YAML. I want a YAML template. It's a bit easier to read than JSON. Same with when I'm getting it to write function code for Lambda. Uh, I'm more familiar with Python, so I usually tell it to write the code in Python. Otherwise, it could be a variety of languages. So um, you can be very specific there. So again, CloudFormation templates, sometimes they work perfectly, sometimes they don't. Um, but once this is ready, I can simply copy the code, save it into a YAML file, and then try and work with it in CloudFormation. And if there are any problems in CloudFormation, I'm going to take the errors, I'm going to come back to ChatGPT, I'm going to put it in, and hopefully it's going to fix it for me. So there's just a few ways, there's unlimited ways that we can work with this technology, but I wanted to give you just a few ideas for the power and how we might utilize this as a learning tool.